Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. You know, for years, and I mean years, we've been having the same conversation about the iPad. I've made videos about it. You've left comments about it. We all know the story. Apple keeps putting these ridiculously powerful desktop class chips, the M1, the M2, now even the M4, into this beautiful, sleek piece of glass. And we've all said it, the iPad has the heart of a MacBook, but the software has kept it in handcuffs. It's always felt like having a race car that you're only allowed to drive in a parking lot. The power has been there, just sitting dormant, waiting for the software to catch up. Well, after watching the announcement for iPadOS 26, I think I can finally say the handcuffs are off. This isn't just an update, I truly believe this is the beginning of a new era for the iPad, and it's an era where the iPad doesn't just compete with the MacBook, it might just kill it for a huge number of people. Apple has finally addressed the fundamental limitations that have held this device back, and the result is something entirely new. So let's grab a coffee, get comfortable, and break down why iPadOS 26 is such a monumental shift. Okay, so let's get to the absolute biggest deal, the feature that changes everything, the new windowing system. And I wanna be really clear here. For a long time, we thought the only way for the iPad to get pro was for it to just become a touchscreen Mac. But what Apple has done here with iPadOS 26 is, I think, much smarter, much more elegant. According to Apple's announcement, this new system lets users fluidly resize app windows, place them exactly where they want, and open even more windows at once. Now let that sink in. This isn't split view. This isn't a slightly better slide over. This is real freeform windowing. You can grab a corner and resize it. You can drag a window to any part of the screen. It's the freedom we've always wanted. Imagine having your script open in pages, a Safari window next to it for research, and your Photos app in the corner to grab an image, all overlapping and sized exactly how you want. That's been the dream and now it's here. This fundamentally changes the iPad from a device where you do one thing at a time to a device where you can manage an entire project with all its moving parts on a single screen. But it's the little things, the details that really sell this as a desktop class experience. It's not just about throwing windows on a screen, it's about how you manage them. Apple introduces a new menu bar. This is huge, you can either swipe down from the top, which is great for when you're using it as a tablet, or, and this is key, just move your cursor to the top of the screen just like on a Mac. This is Apple understanding that the iPad is a hybrid device it's not just a tablet anymore, and it's not just a laptop replacement, it's both, and the interface now intelligently adapts to how you're using it. And then there's Exposé, a classic Mac feature now on iPad, letting you quickly view all their open windows spread out. No more swiping endlessly between full screen apps, trying to remember what you had open, you just get a bird's eye view of your entire workspace. And the fact that windows remember their size and place Apple says if an app was resized, it will reopen in the exact same size and position. That's a huge quality of life improvement that removes a major point of friction. It shows Apple is thinking about persistent professional workflows, not just one-off tasks. This is the kind of thoughtful design that separates a toy from a tool. What's really brilliant here is that they didn't just turn the iPad into a Mac with a touchscreen, they built a new system from the ground up that's perfect for both touch and a cursor. The announcement mentions window tiling is specifically designed for the iPad's unique capabilities, which suggests simple, touch-friendly flicks and gestures to arrange windows. So you get all the power of a desktop, but with the intuitive direct manipulation that makes the iPad so special. The Mac can't do that. It's a one-trick pony in comparison, forever tied to a keyboard and mouse. The iPad is now the more flexible, more versatile machine. And this brings me to something that might seem small, but is so, so important. The cursor. For a while now, we've had cursor support with the Magic Keyboard, but it's been that big round blobby thing, a stand-in for your finger, it was fine, but it wasn't for precision work. Now with this new windowing system, the cursor is changing. It's becoming a proper arrow, a precision pointer. Why does this matter? Because you can't have resizable windows without a cursor that can precisely grab the tiny edge of that window. You can't navigate a dense menu bar with a blob. This small change signals a massive shift in intent from Apple. The iPad is no longer just a touch first device. It's a touch and pointer equal device. It's Apple acknowledging that for certain tasks, you need the pixel perfect precision that only a real pointer can provide. This is the final piece of the puzzle that makes the iPad feel like a complete computer. So we have this incredible new way to manage apps on screen. But what about what's happening? Well, in the background, this has been the other half of the handcuffs problem. You start a big video export in LumaFusion, and if you dare to switch to another app to reply to a message, the export just 
stops. It's been infuriating. This is where iPad OS 26 drops the other shoe. The official announcement says, taking advantage of the incredible power of Apple Silicon, iPad OS 26 unlocks the ability to perform computationally intensive background tasks. That phrase, computationally intensive, is music to my ears. This isn't just background audio playback or a small file download. This is Apple explicitly saying they are letting the M series chips off the leash. This is what that M series chip has been waiting for. It's finally being allowed to do the heavy lifting it was designed for. Think about the workflow this enables. You can start rendering a 4K video, then jump over to Pixelmator to design the thumbnail, and then open notes to write the video description, all while the render continues chugging away in the background. And Apple being Apple, they've made it elegant. The process shows up as a live activity, so you always have a clear sense of what is running and can control it. This single feature transforms the iPad from a sequential task device where you do A then B then C into a true parallel processing workstation where you can do A, B and C all at once. It's a fundamental change in the device's capability. Okay, powerhouse processing is one thing, but if you can't manage your files, it's all for nothing. And let's be honest, the files app has been fine. But not great, it's felt like a simplified, almost toy-like version of the Finder on a Mac. Well, that's over. The new Files app has an updated list view with resizable columns and collapsible folders. I know it sounds nerdy, but if you've ever tried to manage files with long names or look at file modification dates on an iPad, you know this is a game changer. It's another one of those desktop class features that just makes everything easier. And we can finally customize folders with colors, icons, and even emoji, just like on the Mac, to make our project folders easier to spot. Plus, you can now just drag a folder right into the dock for instant access. These aren't just cosmetic changes, they are fundamental workflow accelerators. You see these three things, the windows, the background tasks, and the new files app. They aren't separate features, they're a package deal. They are a triumvirate of pro functionality. You can't have a pro workflow without the ability to see all your info, windows, manage your assets, files, and have the computer work for you without interrupting background tasks before the iPad failed on all three counts for serious work. With iPad OS 26, Apple has delivered the whole package as if all that wasn't enough, Apple is also filling in some of the long-standing gaps that made the iPad feel like a lesser device. They're basically going down a checklist of every reason someone might have said the iPad isn't a real computer, and just crossing them off one by one. For instance, the phone app is finally coming to iPad. It's no longer just a giant FaceTime machine. It can be a true communications hub, making and receiving calls directly. And for creators like me, the new audio features are huge, you can now choose different microphones for each app and even for individual websites. And you can get studio Tash quality audio recording directly from your AirPods into a recording app on the iPad. The iPad is becoming a self-contained mobile production studio in a way the MacBook with its often criticized webcam and basic mics can only dream of. They're even beefing up the built-in apps to be more professional. The calculator app isn't just a calculator anymore. It's a powerful tool for students and engineers with new 3D graphing capabilities in math notes. They're adding a new read pen tool for artists and calligraphers who use the Apple Pencil. Every corner of the OS is being pushed to be more capable, more professional, these aren't random additions, they are part of a deliberate strategy to eliminate any remaining argument that the iPad is a compromise. So let's bring it all together. For years, the debate between an iPad and a MacBook has been about compromises. You chose the iPad for portability and touch, but you compromised on multitasking and real work. You chose the MacBook for power and a proper OS, but you compromised on versatility and input methods. iPad OS 26 shatters that dynamic. With iPadOS 26, the iPad now matches the MacBook on the core pillars of what we consider real computing, windowing, background tasks, and file management. But here's the kicker. It does all that without giving up any of the things that make the iPad special. It still has an amazing touchscreen. It still has the best-in-class Apple Pencil. It's still more portable and can be used in more ways than a MacBook ever could. This really makes you ask the question, who should buy a MacBook Air in 2025? And I think the answer is... A much smaller group of people. If you are a developer who needs specific command line tools or a power user who needs to connect a dozen peripherals, sure the MacBook Pro is still your machine. But for the vast majority of people, students, writers, artists, photographers, business professionals, even people like me who want a powerful portable computer that can adapt to any task, I think the iPad is no longer the alternative choice 
with iPadOS 26, it has become the default choice. It's the new gold standard for personal computing. This is a massive shift and honestly, the biggest leap forward for the iPad maybe ever. It's the moment the hardware and software finally came together to deliver on a decade old promise. But what do you guys think? Is this enough to make you switch? Do you think the iPad is finally the MacBook killer we've been waiting for? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.